you know, every team has, I'm sure, some interesting facts about them. But when you look at the Cleveland Browns and just that, I like to look at the first 10 years when I, I think of the Cleveland Browns because their dominance in their first 10 years is unparalleled in the history of sport in any sport. They came into the league in 1946, and when they came to Cleveland, um, you have to remember, 1945, the Cleveland Rams had just won the NFL championship. So they were the best team in all of football. That being said, the moment they heard that Paul Brown was going to be coaching a team in Cleveland, they decided to pick up the entire franchise and they moved to Los Angeles. That's when they left town. And so when you think about the impact of Paul Brown, just think of that. Think of whatever NFL champion you want. You know, if it was the New England Patriots, Think of a team moving into their area and the Patriots just picking up and leaving. The longer they stayed, the more the Browns meant to the city of Cleveland. What do the Browns mean to the city of Cleveland? I, my, my first thought is if the Browns won the Super Bowl, the party that the Cleveland Cavs had down in downtown Cleveland would probably be nothing compared to what the Browns would have downtown. Not to say that that, that uh, you know gathering in downtown Cleveland for the Cavs was, wasn't a big deal. It was a huge deal for Cleveland. Obviously, there were a lot of people there supporting that ceremony, but I think if the Browns were to win the Super Bowl, uh, that ceremony would be uh, probably twice as big as that. There is, there is a, a signature piece of Cleveland. Cleveland is not Cleveland without the Browns. They, they drive the economy to some extent. They certainly provide a lot of flavor to the city, to, its, to the community, offer a great deal of uh, financial support to the community. Though the Browns had their ups and downs, the worst was yet to come. Oh, it was couple weeks into that 95 season because the Browns were actually I remember they were doing pretty good everybody thought after 94 success they would come back in 95 and with Belichick and Saban everybody the coaching staff and players they thought it would be their year and then once they announced the move it just deflated everybody oh I was a kid I was heartbroken we're losing our football team going to the games with my dad as a kid back then and then the block parties we would have for away games, you know, all the houses on the street always knew Sundays were Browns time. Uh, my thoughts on the Browns leaving in 95. Well, obviously I was disappointed, you know, when you have followed an organization uh, for as long as I have, it was disappointing to see him leave. I had some friends actually that had worked for the organization and that meant they were leaving the Cleveland area and I was disappointed to see, see them leave. You know, the Cleveland Browns have been a staple for the city of Cleveland and to see the organization that so many people have loved and followed and supported leave, yeah, it was tough. It was tough and it was tough to, tough to take. When they announced that the team was going to leave, it was as if the identity of this town was just stripped from it. You know, it's hard to describe. It was soul sucking. I mean, you look at the videos of that last game where all the all the advertisers stripped their ads out of the stadium, and so the whole stadium's just all black. And then the fans showed up for that last game with their saws and wrenches and just basically dismantled that stadium so they could just take a piece of it home with them to have something to remember. It's almost you know when you're watching it happen, you, you know, it's almost like you're not really in a real spot, like it's not really happening because, it, like I said, that they were the identity of Cleveland. But that dreaded day finally came, a day no one will forget. We went down early. The fan base was just out of this world. Everybody knew it was the final game. Didn't know for how long or at the time. We didn't even know if we would get a team back. And it was full of different side emotions. You had people upset. You had people angry. You had people crying. The players were equally upset and in tears. I mean, Steve Everett has a story of he was buying a house. David Modell came up. It was like two weeks before the move was announced. Said, oh, congratulations on buying a house here locally. And then two weeks later, they announced they're moving to Baltimore. And he's like, nobody could be truthful. Um, and then that final game, that's where all the players felt their emotions that it was the end. And then at the end of the game, when fans started getting crazy and cutting their seats out, tearing out the bleachers and taking stuff with them. An empty atmosphere because all the advertisers had pulled their advertisements so it was like walking into just a bare stadium you didn't have any advertisements anywhere 
listening to the game on the radio and, and hearing um, Doug Deacon and Jimmy Donovan, it, like it, it was just awful. You, you know, the just the description of the game. We were watching on a little TV and we could hear everybody talking. Um, you know, even the national media were disgusted with it. But it, it didn't really hit me until uh, at least an hour and a half after the game when the first group of fans started showing up to the gas station. I'll never forget it. It was a uh, Dodge Caravan, like an 83, 84, all rusted out Dodge Caravan, uh, West Virginia plates, and it was just, I mean, it looked like a clown car. There was like 12 guys jumping out of this van, and when they pulled up to the gas station, I kid you not, they had at least five rows of chairs. Like, I mean, when I say rows, I'm not talking like one, I'm talking like five rows, so like probably 10 chairs a piece on the roof of this minivan, and they had a ratchet strap, and I mean, it was just like, it was crunching the top of the van, and they got out, and um, we talked for a long time, because I told them, you know, what I had done, and, 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 you know, obviously I knew where they were coming from, and uh, they were, I mean, they were crying, and, and it was just, I don't know, that's when it kind of hit, when I'm like, man, because you saw it on TV, but then when you saw these guys, and they started telling the stories, and it's just, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm really glad I wasn't there, because I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of an emotional person, um, I don't know if I would have been able to handle that much emotion. They needed someone to blame, and that someone was owner Art Modell, but did everyone hold a grudge against the man? Oh, yeah, I mean, he was looked at greed. He could have easily sold the team, had money here, still been, I'm sure he could have still been a part owner of the team had he sold it and kept the money and had a partner, but he was greedy, wanted to still own it, and then that's why when he moved to Baltimore, he won the Super Bowl and then still had to sell the team because he still had money problems. No, I don't. I, I mean, I, I again, not knowing all the, the finer details, it's, it's hard for me to pass judgment on somebody and not knowing the total situation, not being in their shoes, I, I, I can't, uh, I can't begrudge him for that. Again, I, I, he, I'm sure it was a very difficult and somewhat painful decision for him to leave Cleveland, but I'm, I'm also sure that he did what he felt was best for the organization and best for he and and uh, the people that had been running, you know, the organization. So I, I can't, uh, I can't begrudge somebody for doing what they felt was best. I mean, I understand it. You know, at the same time, I understand the move. You know, that's the one thing that separates me, I think, from a lot of fans or people who are close to the team. A lot of people hate Art Modell, the situation he was put into. Yeah, he made some bad business decisions. But at the same time, Mayor White had painted him into a corner. I don't know. Like I said, the guy never treated me bad. I, I felt like he always was very philanthropic in the community. And I feel bad for him in that regard. But yeah, that uh, when I, we heard the news that they were they were leaving, and we kind of heard the rumblings. The writing was kind of on the wall a little bit earlier for us than the general public. Yeah, when they left, that was just uh, that was a shocker. I'm not as bitter about Art Modell as some other people are because I understood I understood what he was trying to do in terms of getting a new facility, really making the Browns back into the Browns because they had wavered a little bit in terms of how good they were and some of the interest had dropped. So I think he was trying to get that interest back by you know, getting a new facility and getting people excited about the Cleveland Browns again. So I wasn't you know, uh, that much of an Art Modell hater. I didn't like him, and I didn't like the fact they, they uh, moved to Baltimore. This is our team, these are our colors, this is our name. You know, Paul Brown started, you're not taking that to Baltimore. But people held their head high, thinking that one day the Browns would return to Cleveland. That was when I got involved with the Touchdown Club at that point, the, the beginnings of it all. A lot of what our efforts were at that time were, let's, let's keep the, the enthusiasm, let's keep people thinking Cleveland Browns, because they're coming back, and when they do come back, we've got to be ready to, to support them. I would like to thank the participants Anthony Dick, Kyle Payton, Kevin Ruppel, and John Snell.